Hello, we're going to talk about molar ratios today. I have an equation up here, and you will recall from the basics about learning about chemical reactions that the coefficients are moles. We can say one mole of phosphorus reacts with six moles of chlorine to pr produce four moles of phosphorus trichloride. Well, we can write this as a ratio, as a mathematical ratio. Now remember, there's an understood one. If you don't have a number in front of the uh, compound, it's understood to be a one. So you have this one, six, and four. And we're going to write down every possible molar ratio from this chemical equation. So we could say one mole of P4 is going to react with six moles of Cl2. Now because this is a ratio, we can actually write it the other way, and it is equally true. Six moles of chlorine gas react with one mole of P4. That is also a true statement. Uh, let's do another one. Let's take the phosphorus and compare it to the phosphorus trichloride. So if we have one mole of P4, we know that that's going to produce four moles of the phosphorus trichloride. Now equally true is the reciprocal of this. Four moles of phosphorus trichloride. We produce four moles of phosphorus trichloride. We know that that came from one mole of the phosphorus. Now the last possible ratio that we could have is comparing chlorine with the phosphorus trichloride. So if we have six moles of the chlorine, it will produce four moles of that phosphorus trichloride. And then again, equally true, if we produce four moles of the phosphorus trichloride. How many moles of chlorine did we use? Right there, six. Six moles of chlorine. Now it's pretty rare that you will actually write just a molar ratio, but this is going to be crucial when we start stoichiometry. So there are molar ratios. You can compare any set of reactants to one another, any set of products to one another, if I had another product, and you can compare reactants to products, products to reactants because those molar coefficients are ratios. Thank you.